I came out to take another shot at getting the shop cleaned up. But the first thing I did was break my Westeros table. Not a big deal, I can glue it back together. The next thing I did was I spilled my coffee and that really bugged me. I had to go in and make more. Still not brewed yet, so I'm a little bit testy. So the first thing that I did when I came out was I cleaned off the top of my workbench trying to get stuff put away. I noticed that it's getting in rough shape in places. I burned it in a couple of spots actually. From doing the mini forge thing, I took the hot bricks and I laid it on the surface and it kind of scorched the top. Also, the surface is getting a little bit grungy looking. You know, it's stained in a couple of places. The burn, the cuts, the scorch marks. Uh, the finish that I put on here is wearing out as well. So I thought I would take the opportunity to First of all, remove my, my wooden vise and then sand the top down and refinish it. And while I'm at it, I thought I would make a couple more of these things right here. These are bench dogs, wooden ones. I lost the other one. I had two, but they're not difficult to make. I have a problem with dirt going down into the dog holes and landing in the drawer. So I've got nine holes, but I certainly don't need nine bench dogs. But I figured if I was going to go ahead and make another one, I might as well make plugs that fit in here as well. To fit the dog holes, the stock needs to be one inch by one inch, so that's the first thing I'll do. If we look at the original, you can see that there's a bit of a wooden spring here that holds it inside the hole so it doesn't slip up and down easily. And that's just another piece of maple cut thin, roughly an eighth of an inch thick. I'm just cutting part of the way through this piece and then I'll trim it off with the bandsaw. Now these dog holes slope forward slightly. I think it's two degrees. I covered that in the build article on my website for this workbench. So the dog hole slopes forwards. That means that the dog itself has to be cut on an angle on the top so that when you push it down, it comes flush with the table. To figure out that angle, I'm just going to use my miter saw and rotate it until it matches the original. Now all I need to do is cut eight pieces out of the blank, with the first one being the correct length for a dog. Now I can just measure what's left and divide it equally into seven pieces. Here I can see that I can get ones that are two inches long. I've got all the plugs cut and the idea is that they'll go down the hole and some of them fit so that they'll stay in there and other ones go in and will drop right through. Although I can't find that one right now. There it is. It goes right through. So I need a simple way to keep them from falling right through the table. And what I came up with was a screw that will be right on the edge of it and that will catch on the edge of the dog hole and still be flush with the top of the bench. All I need to do is drill a 1 8 inch pilot hole, countersink that, drive the screw in, then I can make a little bit of a cutout with my carving knife in the edge of the dog hole for the screw head to fit in. Okay, I can put that away and this is the last one. And that solves that problem. We look at the original here and you can see how it's cut out on an angle here, comes flat and then it cuts in and that the wooden spring actually sticks out past the side by a very small amount and that's what clamps it inside the hole. Now this is fairly stiff and that's not really a problem because it doesn't have to move very far. To make the new one, I'm just going to copy this one by tracing the cuts that I've got to make. Then I'll bring it over to the bandsaw, cut it out, and glue on the spring. Before I glue on the spring, I'm just going to sand it smooth just by hand here. That's to get rid of the saw marks from the bandsaw. Spread it out fairly evenly. Wipe the excess in my jeans and then I can get the spring positioned and then clamp it in place. 
So while the glue is drying on the new bench dog, I took off the vise and put that aside. Now I'm just brushing any loose dirt off the top and I'll get the sander and start sanding. I'm starting with the 100 grit disc but it's already been used. I want to try to make sure that I get any of the dirt that's going to gum up a new sheet of paper off in the first pass. Now I've changed the disc out to the new one and I'll go over it again. I actually made this workbench from deck boards that I got from my old house when I tore down the deck. They were pressure treated. I took them and I let them dry out inside my garage for almost two years before I actually touched them. Then I cut them down to size, planed them flat and even, and made the top with those. It wasn't very pretty looking. It had some knots, holes, and so on. So I filled those with body filler, thinking, you know what, it's just a uh, workbench. Who cares? Then I picked the worst color stain in the world for a workbench, and I stained it that color. That's fine, I mean, if you're just working, but for video, it's way too dark. It, it really doesn't show up what you're doing nicely. So about two years ago, I put a new top on it. I added a little bit extra width to it as well. So it's hardwood on the edge, uh, maple. And then in the field, these are strips of pine that I cut to about a quarter inch thick, planed them all nice and smooth, then glued them all down with construction adhesive. Now about the only thing more tedious than actually doing sanding is watching someone else do it. So I spared you most of that. I have it sanded as much as I want it at this point. I don't want to try to get rid of all the blemishes. Obviously I'd have to do a lot more sanding because some of these dents are pretty deep. Uh, nice to maintain a little bit of the history and the character of your workbench anyway. And they serve as a reminder, especially the scorch marks over here, not to do that again. So I'm just going to clean it off now and give it the first coat of urethane. Now when I sanded it, I like I said, I didn't try to get rid of all the blemishes, but what I did try to do was get rid of as much of the yellow as I could because when I first refinished this, I put on oil-based polyurethane. Oil-based polyurethane has a tendency to go yellow, or yellow the wood. This time I'm going to use water-based polyurethane, so that'll keep it whiter looking. I've got a smaller brush than I'd really like, but I don't want to go buy one. I'm just going to do it in strips all the way down, moving across, to try to maintain something of a wet edge. This stuff dries pretty fast. I'll be able to get two coats on today, and that is all I will do. I don't want a heavy buildup of finish on the surface here. It's a good idea to do this, you know every couple of years anyway. Take the sander, sand off the old stuff and put on some new stuff. Now the first coat is dry. I brought a fan out to help with that. We've got air blowing across the surface that will dry the finish quicker. Um, it's ready for the second coat. Not strictly necessary but I'm going to give it a quick rub down. This is 400 grit paper and wipe it down again with a dry paper towel. Since I've already got a coat on the top of these plugs I'm going to take them out so that they don't get too heavily glued in. Now I am getting a little bit running down inside the dog hole, so what I'll do is take my finger and wipe those out before they start to dry. Second coat is dry, it's ready to use again. I'm just going to put my plugs back in. I'm going to set the vise back in place just to get it off my table saw. I'm not actually going to fasten it down yet because the finish is still soft and I don't want it permanently glued onto the table surface. Now the glue is at all day to dry on the dog so that we'll be ready to go. Just need to bring it over to the disc sander and clean it up a little bit around the corners. So here's the original. It's in here. Push it down. Here's the new one. It's going to take a little while for this to soften up. 
so it slides in as smoothly. Might need a little bit more sanding also. Also, I'm a little bit concerned that the glue is not 100% set up, so I'm not going to push it in and put the strain on that spring just yet. I'll leave it overnight, and by tomorrow, there's no way that'll come off. It'll split the wood off first. Well, I hope you found that interesting and informative. It is really easy to make these. It can be a little bit tricky to get that angle down there on the bottom correct the first time. Um, what I would recommend is doing like a mock-up and then you could try and try again until you get the angle right. And the best way is to hold it on there and then the tip of the spring should be sticking just proud of that surface there so that it will actually push in without any problem but then it won't break. If it's sticking out too far it will break.